All right, so this should be pretty quick, I think. Hopefully pretty painless. We'll see about that. So we just mentioned that we came up with one formula for the law of cosines, okay, which is this guy right here. Okay, the equation you wrote in step D is the law of cosines, or one, one version of the law of cosines, all right, which is usually written as a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. They want us to now write formulas using cosine b or cosine c to describe the same relationships in the triangle. All right. So this actually, does anyone have any idea what they think might be? So this is using cosine a. This is how the formula kind of works out. Does anyone want to take a guess about how like it would work out if we used cosine b here instead? How else would the rest of this formula change? Can anyone maybe see what it would be or have an idea? You want to take a minute and look at it real quick. You can kind of figure it out just by, I mean, you can kind of like mm, logic it out a little bit or guess it out a little bit. So, Hunter, you want to stat, take a stab at it? So, instead of cosine of A, if I have cosine B here, what's my letter going to be right here? Uh, It'll be B squared, and then what will these two be? Uh, a, squared plus C squared. a squared plus C squared, and then minus 2 A. a. Of well, don't forget this little C right there, too. It'll be oh, AC, and then cosine of B. Exactly right. And then the other one follows as well. So the variations are basically like cosine of whatever the angle is. Okay, so if it's cosine of b, that means it's b squared equals the other two sides minus twice the other two sides times cosine of b. Or if it's c, cosine of c, again, that means that it's c squared equals the other two sides squared added together minus 2ab cosine of c. Hey, what's up? Uh, yes. There you go. You're welcome. Okay. So there it is. All right. So those are your two other formulations. So how the heck are we supposed to use these? These are just ridiculous, right? And actually, does anyone see another familiar formula hidden within this law of cosines? Yeah, Maria, the Pythagorean theorem. Exactly right. Okay. In fact, we can see it right here very obviously, right? C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So you can see that this formula, remember this formula, does it require that our triangle is a right triangle? No, this you can use on any triangle, but you can see that, so basically it's like, it's kind of like a version of the Pythagorean theorem that's slightly corrected for triangles that are not right triangles. So it's like the Pythagorean theorem, but with a correction factor for non-right triangles, okay? So yeah, okay, cool. Let's then flip the page here, and you can see those formulas kind of written out for us. <coughs> okay, and a non-right triangle shown there. <clears throat> so, let's get started here. So, uh, we're going to use this. So, uh, let's look here for example one. It says solve triangle ABC. So, solve the triangle means you're going to find all the missing angles, all the missing sides. All right, so for example here, in this triangle, we're missing angle A, angle C, and side B. All right, so since we're given the angle B, that is the law of cosines version that we're going to use, okay? We're going to use the second one here, the one that starts with B squared equals A squared plus B squared. We're going to use that one because we've got this angle B right here. And so our setup will be, so again, we're going to use the b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. Okay? And so we're going to plug in. So little b, that's what we're solving for. So we're going to have b squared equals, okay, a is what in this case? Anybody? What's little a? Yeah, it's going to be the 7, okay, right? Little a is always opposite the angle a there. So it's going to be 7 squared plus, and then c is going to be the other side, 5, minus 2 times 7 times 5 times the cosine of angle b, which is 100 degrees. Okay. And then we go to our calculators, which I just gave away. Whoopsies. So um, anyway, you go to your calculator. You type that mess in. B squared equals 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 7 times 5 plus 9, 3 degrees.
right, I'm going to rely on you guys because I don't have any more graphing calculators. So what is that when you put all that together there? B squared equals what? Anyone got it? Adam, what'd you get? 86.2. 86.2? Okay, and then, last step here, what do we have to do, Adam? Square yeah, square root both sides. And when we do that, we get B is about what? 9.3. 9.3? Okay. So there you go. Now that we have B equals 9.3, to find those other missing angles, okay, to find those other missing angles, what do we do? What can we use now? Now I have an angle and opposite side combination. So do I have to use law of cosines to find angle C or angle A? No, okay, what can I now use? Yeah, we can use, well, Sogatoa, we can't use Sogatoa because we don't have a right triangle. But what's another tool that we have to solve triangles besides law of cosines? Yeah, we can use law of sines now, exactly right. We have an angle and opposite side combination, so now we can say, okay, sine of 100 over 9.3, sine of 100 degrees, sorry, over 9.3 is equal to, and it doesn't matter which one you pick here. Let's, uh, let's do angle A. So we'll say sine of A over 7. <coughs> okay, so now we want to solve for sine, we want to solve for A. So the first thing I have to do here is what to both sides? So we're going to cross multiply, but actually, well, yeah, okay, we can cross multiply. So I get 7 times sine of 100 degrees equals 9.3 times the sine of A. And then we're going to divide both sides by 9.3. You got it. We want to get that sine kind of by itself. And so I end up with sine of A. I'm running out of space here, too. Sine of A equals 7 times sine of 100 over 9.3. And then what are we supposed to do here to get that A by itself? Yeah, sine inverse, exactly right. So that means we're going to do the sine inverse of this whole mess here. 7 sine of 100 all over 9.3. Okay? So there's a sine... Uh, sorry, I kind of like ran out of space there. So that's angle A equals that. All right, so it's sine inverse of 7 times 100. Don't forget to put parentheses around your numerator and divide by your denominator there. And the way you kind of want to type out your calculator is something like this. Second sine, so sine inverse of 7 sine 100 divided by 9.3. It's kind of how you want to type that in. 47.8? Is that what I almost got to? We're good with that? Thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, 47.8, and that's what the book says there, too. So that's good. So yeah, angle A is about 47.8 degrees. Whew. And then to find angle C, do we need to use law of sines there? No. Just subtract from 180. Exactly right. So let's see here. 80 minus 47.8 is going to be 32.2. Thirty-two point two degrees, Whew. and there he solved the triangle. Okay. So yesterday we were able to solve using law of sines if our triangle was angle side angle side, or yeah, you know, well actually we only did side angle sides yesterday. Here our tr our triangle is oh sorry no we didn't do side angle side sorry yesterday we did angle angle side. If we had angle angle side, then we could solve the um, we could, or angle side angle. We could solve for um, the missing sides using um, law of sines. So law of sines, we can use that if we had angle side angle or angle angle side. Law of cosines, okay, side angle side or side 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 situations. We can use law of cosines. 
So that's right there. And so let's look at a side 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 example right here for letter B. Okay. Now, this next piece is important. When, it's, when it says here step one, so you notice the difference here in this in this triangle is that all three sides are given to us. There are no angles given to us. Whereas up here we were given one angle and two sides. Okay, here we've got three sides, and so we can kind of choose which angle we're going to solve for. We can choose to solve for angle B, angle A, or angle C, whichever one we want. But notice what the directions say: find the measure of the largest angle, angle C. Now, first of all. How do we even know that angle C? How do we even know that angle C is going to be the largest angle, Michael? Because uh, across from the left side. Exactly. Okay. And so we're going to pick angle C to solve for because we want to solve for the largest angle, and it's going to help us because we can, it can, we can run into some interesting kind of uh, behavior if we decide to solve for just any old angle here first. We always want to go for that largest angle first. So we're going to solve for C. So that means. Which one of these formulas are we going to use up here if we're trying to solve for angle C? Which is, which is the one that's got angle C? Oh. Uh, C squared. Yep, the C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So we're going to use that formula, that version of it. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared <laughs> minus 2AB cosine C. Yeah, sorry. I'll, actually, I'll just go ahead and scoot it down. How about that? Is that? Yeah, you just wanted to see it, right? Okay. Okay. And now we just plug in information. So let's see, c squared, that's 12 squared. a squared, is, or a is going to be 10.5 squared plus b squared, which is 6.3 squared minus 2 times 10.5 times 6.3 and then cosine of c. That's what we're trying to solve for. And now we want to solve for the cosine of C. So we simplify this sum. 12 squared is 144. What's um, 10.5 squared plus 6.3 squared? I'm not that handy. Actually, I guess I have my... 149.94. 149.94? A minus, and then let's see here. I'll just do it this way. Help me, calculator two, two times ten point five times six point three. Okay, one thirty two point three cosine of C. Now, can I subtract this one forty nine point nine four? For, uh, or sorry, can I do 149.94 minus 132.3? Can I subtract these two numbers? No. Why not? <sighs> You're right, I can't. Yeah, Tanner, why not? Yeah, okay, so please be careful of that. It's a very common student mistake. You guys, like, I, it's the te not you guys, but some people have the tendency, when I've taught this before, students have the tendency to just, like, put all these numbers together. They're just like, 10.5 squared plus 6.3 squared minus 2 times 10.5 times 6.3. They take that whole thing in their calculator, but you can't combine these numbers with these numbers. These are being multiplied by cosine C, okay? And these are not. So that's why we can add those together. They're like terms, but this is, these are not like terms. So what can we do then? What should we do next here at this point? What should we do next to, to continue solving? What should we do here? Mary, what should be our next step here? We want to get, co I guess we want to, we want to solve for C, so first then we have to get cosine C kind of by itself. So what should we start to continue solving? To get this cosine C by itself, what should we try to eliminate first from this side of the equation, I guess? Yep, exactly right. And how are we going to get rid of that? Yes, yep. Subtract 149.94 from both sides. We end up with like, uh, let's see here, 144 minus 149.94. And so we get negative 5.94 equals negative 132.3 cosine of angle C. <coughs> All right. And then what there, Mary? What do we do now? Yep. 
and we get about, oof, okay, and so for I would be very careful to round this too much. So I'm going to say, like, let's do um, three decimal places. So 0 0.045 equals cosine of C. And then last step here, Mary, to get the cosine kind of by itself, or sorry, to get the angle C by itself, what should we do? How do you get rid of cosine? Remember what, what command do we use in our calculator for that? Yes, cosine inverse, exactly right. So angle C is equal to cosine inverse of 0 0.045. Hmm. And that I cannot do in my calculator. So what would be that value? What'd you get? What'd you get? 87.4 degrees? Sounds good to me. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So 87.4 degrees is our answer for angle C. Okay, so there it is. Now, we still have to solve for angle A and angle B here. Do we need to use law of cosines to solve for angle A or angle B now, at this point? Yeah, no, what could we use now? Yep, we can go to law of sines now, exactly right. And it doesn't matter which one you solve for, so it's kind of up to you guys to find the other um, angle. So, um, I don't know, let's solve for angle, let's solve for angle B, I guess. So angle B, so let's see here, so that means then, I'll just do it on this side. I'll kind of zoom out some more there. All right, so why don't you guys go ahead and do that. Find angle B, okay? Find and angle A then, I guess, at that point too, because you should be able to get both pretty easily. Once you get angle B, angle A should be easy. But go ahead and solve for angle B.
seeing how we did here. Right there, I see them in there. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. Nicely done. Hmm. Okay, so ideally, we got something like that. Okay, so there's the setup there sine of 87.4 over 12 equals sine of b over 6.3. You only need to multiply really the 6.3 over. You can cross multiply and solve, that's fine. And you get sine of b equals 6.3, sine of 87.4 all over 12. If you sine inverse then of this whole mess, so sine inverse of 6.3, sine of 87.4 all over 12, I got 31.6 and then 61 degrees, okay? Um, it depends on if you rounded this value some first. So if, if you like found this value and then rounded it and then did sine inverse of that, your answer will be slightly off from mine. And then your, of course your a then will be slightly off as well. But they should be relatively close then, okay? B should be about 31.6. A should be about 61. Okay. Questions on any of that? Okay. So if there are no questions, that's that's it. Okay. That's that's it. All right. I won't make you guys like do any more things like crazy like that. So I'm going to give you guys a little assignment here, and you can have the rest of class to work on that. All right. So that's how you use the law of cosines there. All right, so let's see, how do I want to do this?
All right, so we're going to start on page 761. All right, 